It's William with Scamming Scammers Action. We are doing our first live Q&A for 2018. And we'd like to thank everybody who joined us for our last ones and through who's joining us for this one. Uh, we appreciate all the questions that you guys have brought in. We're going to try to do as many as we can, answer as many as possible. Um, if you do have any questions that you write in the comment section, I'll try to get to them. Um, we'll get to as many as possible. Well, with that being said, I hope everybody had a great Christmas. A great 2018 is upon us, and I hope everyone is staying safe and staying away from the scammers. All right, with that being said, welcome everybody who's joined us. Um, if you missed our Q&A today, you can always catch us on YouTube. Uh, we'll have all the videos uploaded there on our official YouTube channel, and you can find many more instructional and educational videos there as well. All right, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start. Um, I want to touch on something really quick before we go to the questions. Um, oh, hello, Patsy. There has been uh, a lot of people coming to our inbox. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, everybody. Um, talking about mutual friends. Um, they will tell us that they ended up with somebody on their friends list and they didn't add them or they don't, they don't remember adding them and they end up being fake. Um, you need to be very, very careful with mutual friends. Scammers will friend friends of yours. And they will go ahead and, and friend them and they will say, um, you know, you'll see this person on, on the, your friend's friends list and you'll think, well, they're friends with my friend at work, so they must be okay. I'll go ahead and add them. You add them and it ends up being a fake profile. They get into your photos, they get into your friends list and it's like this big spider web and scammers will start friending your friends and your friends and your friends. And so you need to be very, very careful with mutual friends. A lot of times you can add somebody and you don't even remember doing it and turns out later it's a fake profile they may become your friend and then deactivate and then reactivate get your photos get what they need friend somebody else you need to be very very careful of it it's always a good idea a lot of us the majority of us have at least a hundred friends if we don't have a thousand friends and it's a good idea to take the time to go through your profile go through your friends list and see who you're friending um you know who who is on your friends list do you really know this person and if you don't know them, don't friend them. Even though they're friends with your best coworker or your best friend, they may not know that person. So don't assume just because your friends are friends with that person that they're okay. Because a lot of times they're not. And that's how a lot of victims um, end up becoming victims because they think, well, it was my friend Sally's friend, so he must be okay. And he wasn't. And Sally had no idea who he was. So be very careful with that. And once you let somebody on your friends list, they're going to steal your photos. They can do a lot of things. So, so do be careful when um, dealing with mutual friends. So with that, let's say hello to everybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with our first question. Um, it comes from Deborah. Hello, Deborah. How can I tell when an Instagram profile is fake? That's a great question. Uh, Instagram is becoming the new Facebook for scammers. Uh, a lot of scammers are leaving Facebook. They're going to Instagram. They're going to Hangouts. They're going to other platforms to scam people. Uh, you know, an Instagram profile is no different than a Facebook profile. Check to see how many followers they have. Check to see what kind of interactions they have on their page, what they're writing on their photos, uh, what they're telling you. Google the photos. Uh, go to Tinai. Look at the photos and see if you get a hit on them. Uh, but above all, just listen to what the profile is telling you. If you're talking to someone on Instagram and they're a military commander and they have 10 followers, and all the followers are Nigerian, or all the followers are middle-aged women who don't know each other, or not in the military, and have no affiliation to this person, it's more than likely gonna be a um, scammer. So with Instagram, it's the same. Just Google the photos, listen to what they're telling you, and pay close attention to that. And like I said, again, they're moving to Hangouts, they're moving to Instagram, Facebook is shutting down profiles, they're not, um, letting new profiles stay open very long and so a lot of scammers are migrating to these other networks so keep that in mind uh, instagram is not a safe place just like facebook you have to be vigilant do your homework and be very 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 careful with who you interact with and listen above all listen to what they're telling you all right our next question is from lucille why do fakes always ask for now the Target Red debit card or Amazon gift card? That's a really great question, and we have followed this, uh, followed up on this before on our page. Um, the Target Red card, I want to tell everybody in the United States and abroad, um, there are Target stores, obviously, in, in other countries, but um, mainly the United States, they're targeting victims. 
the target red debit card is basically a debit card that you can connect to your bank account and you can use it at a target store but you can also use it online for other purchases um, the reason scammers like this card is because any victim can pretty much get one now in the United States we have credit scores so if your credit score isn't high enough you can't get a credit card with the debit card the target red card even if your credit score is 400 which is really bad you can still get this debit card because it's connected to your bank account it's not solely based on a credit report credit score it's connected to your bank and what happens is TD Bank owns the target red cards once you get this card it's in your name it's under your social security number it's under your credit report and it's connected to your bank account scammers can load that card with money they can take um, money from a stolen bank account from a hacked bank account they can take and have victims load money onto your debit card and then they can use it or they can have you after it's loaded go to a target store and withdraw money off of it so a lot of scammers are using this it's a very easy card to load for um, scammers it's a wire fraud scammers they can load it very quickly and like I said it's very easy for you and I to get if your credit score is not impeccable you can still get this card and that's that's the main reason why scammers are using it it's very simple it's very easy um, also Amazon gift cards they're moving they do ask for iTunes cards of course but um, Amazon gift cards are a big market now and they're easy to get you can buy them online you don't even have to leave your store to buy an Amazon gift card they want the numbers they use them they trade them they sell them for currency they do all kinds of things with these Amazon gift cards the bottom line someone's asking you to open a bank account a debit card Amazon gift card they need it because they're a soldier uh, iTunes card any kind of gift cards just block them because they're going to be a scammer. Don't don't feed into the lies of I need this because I need to take a leave. I need a target red card because I can't get my money. Block them. No one needs your personal information. No one needs you to open a bank account. Any legit person doesn't need that. So just keep that in mind. Do not open these these bank cards, these debit cards for people you've never met in person. Because the reality is it's under your name, your social security number, and it's going to be you who gets in trouble if something happens and they find out it is fraud or there is fraudulent activity on it all right so keep that in mind people uh, we had a question from Rhonda how do you find out if they are a real person or fake what you need to do is the basics um, you can read our notes section it tells you what to look for how to Google a photo how to stay safe what what they're saying you know there's different ways to tell um, you really have to pay attention to what they're saying to you and, and please refer to our notes section we have tons of notes we have tons of videos on YouTube that tell you how to stay safe how to see if a profile is real or not um, and that that's the best thing you can do is read our notes the note is pinned to the top of the page and that's gonna be the best thing you can do that is our go-to you know if there was a book written on on how to stay safe and, and tell if a person's real or fake it's in our notes and, and read our notes you know if you have questions our inbox is open but a lot of questions are answered through our notes and our, and our YouTube videos so so please don't be afraid to read those notes do your homework read up on things and keep yourself safe and again we don't do anything that you can't do yourself so so keep that in mind just keep keep learning keep educating yourself and you know you you won't become a victim be very vigilant and be very careful all right if you have any questions Rhonda our inbox is open for you uh, next question is from John hello John I've been talking to this woman online and I googled her pictures but they came up with no results does it mean she's real absolutely not scammers steal photos um, they steal photos of famous people and porn stars and generals and, and very famous people but they also steal photos of you and me they steal photos from your neighbor Bob down the street when you google a photo of a person that uh, they steal Anne's photos. They've stolen her photos and used them on dating sites. If you Google a person and a photo and it comes up with no results, it doesn't mean they're real. It just means that perhaps the photo was stolen off of somebody who is not known or who hasn't had their photos stolen and used a lot of times, so it's not going to come up in a search result. At the end of the day, you want to look at what the person is telling you. You want to look at what they're asking of you, what their life story is, their phone numbers, different things like that. A photo is not 
a surefire way to tell if a person is real or not. There's many, many things you need to do. And again, it's going to be in our notes section if you have any questions. Our inbox is open. But no, a photo result does not mean that a, a profile is legit. Uh, we had Kim ask where the scams come from. We've covered this a few times in our previous um, videos. Scammers come from all over the world. They come from the United States. They come from the UK, Australia, Malaysia, New Zealand. They come from everywhere. However, the majority of romance scams and fake profiles, they come from West Africa. They come from Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, South Africa. Um, that whole continent of Africa, there are a lot of scammers. Um, we have to say the majority of them are Nigeria and Ghana. But again, there are scammers living in Malaysia. Um, there are Nigerian scammers living in Europe, in, in Italy, in, in Germany, um, scamming. So just because you're talking to somebody and they ask you to send money to um, Kelvin Oyewell from Berlin, Germany, don't assume that it's not a scam because it is. Anyone that asks you for money and you've never met them, block them. It's just that's the best way to do it and um, that's the best way to stay safe. Uh, we do have a few questions in our comment section. I'm going to try to get to as many as possible. Um, and again, with scammers, like I said, they're in every country, and you know some are easier to find than others. It just depends on how they work their scam. So, uh, next question is from Magda. Greetings from Argentina. Hello. I was the victim of a scam and heard Western Union is giving money back to victims. Someone sent me a private message asking me for my information. This is true. Is this person working for Western Union? We've covered this a few times and I want to cover this again because it's very, very, very important. Yes, there is a class action suit against Western Union um, and some victims may get their money back through this class action lawsuit. However, the only place that you can file is through www.ftc.gov. That is the official website that will take you to the class action suit. If you are getting a PM from somebody that you don't know randomly, and they're saying, I work for Western Union lawsuit, whatever, I can get you your money back, block them. To file a claim, it costs you nothing. And you want to go to the official website to do this. Now, does it guarantee you're going to get money back? Absolutely not. It is a class action suit, and anyone who's ever been in a class action suit knows that there are chances you could get money back, and there are chances that you won't get anything back, or you may get $50 out of your 5000 that you sent to a scammer. So what you need to do is you need to file with FTC.gov. Follow the links. Uh, for our friends abroad, there are links on that site, and there is an 800 number you can call um, to file. So don't file, don't give any information to somebody you just met online or someone that PMs you. And also, if you get a random email and it's not from a, you know, ftc.gov, an official site, if it's from someone at Gmail or someone at Hotmail or whatever, um, saying they can get your money back, it's a scam. So remember, don't, don't file, don't give your personal information to anybody online who claims they can get your money back because that is completely, completely not true. All right, our next question we have is from Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Someone offered me Bitcoins through Facebook at a cheap price. $500 a coin. Can I trust them? No. No. I mean, Bitcoins right now, a lot of people are getting scammed for Bitcoins. And let me tell you, I, I watch the stock market. I watch trading. Bitcoins are going for $16,000 a coin. 16000 if someone is coming to you on Facebook and saying that they're a binary trader, they're a trader for Bitcoin, and they're rock bottom prices, dirt cheap, block them because it is a scam. There's very few places you can buy Bitcoins online that are reputable. One of those sites is called Coinbase.com. You can buy Bitcoins from them. If you have $16,000 to spend on Bitcoins, go to a reputable dealer. Do not go through someone on Facebook, you know, someone that has a profile and they're wearing a suit and tie and they look great and they look like they're trustworthy. It, it's going to be a scam and you're going to get scammed out of a lot of money that way. So, no, don't buy Bitcoins through somebody you don't know online. Go to a trading site. Uh, Jennifer asked, what if a letter came through the mail? Um... It depends on what you're talking about. If you've given someone your address and you start getting, oh, you mean the, uh, the Western Union. Yes, Western Union is sending letters through the mail to victims that they have found on their, um, their database. 
We've had victims in Italy who have gotten air, international airmail from Western Union. You need to double check the address, double check the phone number on the letter. Take the address, take the phone number, put it through Google, make sure that it registers to the FTC.gov, to the Western Union lawsuit. Um, there's a mailing address in Kentucky that a lot of these um, lawsuit paperwork is coming from. That is the legit address. Above anything, Google it. Uh, if you have a question or you want us to look at the letter, you can always bring it to our inbox and we'll take a look for you. But yes, they are sending letters in the mail to victims who are on a database. So uh, if you do get a letter in the mail, just double check it. Uh, it's more than likely it, it can be real, but there's always that chance that it could be fake. So do, do check that out before you fill that information out. The next question is from Heike. Hello, Heike. I've been talking to a military man and he video chatted with me but said his mic was broken. How can I know he's real? The video was of a military man, same as in the photo, sitting at a desk. Uh, a lot of scammers have military men's videos. They're random videos shot on camera, shot on a cell phone. Um, scammers do play videos that are, they're, they play them like a movie and they're faked. The best thing we can tell you, there's a couple ways you can make sure that the person is real. Now, with the mic being broken, that's kind of suspicious because usually the mic and the webcam are in one piece. So someone's telling you my mic's broken. I would be a little leery of that. Um, the best thing you can do, you're on camera with somebody, tell them to grab a piece of paper and a pen, write your name on a piece of paper and pen, tell them to hold that paper up and have their name or your name written on it and make them hold up the paper. That's the best way to do it. Because a real legit person, you know, if you're talking to somebody that you are romantic with or you have feelings for and you're just meeting, um, a real person is gonna be sympathetic to you and say, look, I've been scammed before, I've, I've talked to scammers before, can you go ahead and write your name on paper and put it up to the camera? A legit person is gonna be like, sure, because I want to. I really wanna get to know you. So they'll write their name on paper and hold it up. A scammer is not going to do that. A scammer is going to say, oh, dear, I can't because of security issues or I'm unable to do that because of blah, blah, blah. So that's the best way. Um, another way, if you're talking on camera to somebody and you're not sure if they're real and you don't want to ask them to do something like that, um, tell them, oh, there's a spider on the wall behind you or there's, a, there's something on your shoulder. Most legit people will brush it off or they'll move. Um, someone on, on a fake video feed is not going to move. They're going to stand perfectly still at that desk. They're going to sit there. They're not going to motion. You know, it's not going to work. So a legit person, any legit person, if you were talking to me on webcam and you said, hey, what's that on the wall behind you? I'm going to go and look. A scammer is not going to. So, you know, video feed, they're not going to move. So try, try that. Ask him to write his name on paper. Tell him he's got something behind him. See if he moves. If he doesn't, it's more than likely just a recorded video. And we had a question uh, from Michelle. She came to us uh, last time and she wanted to know um, a couple questions and it's about scam baiting. So we're gonna to touch on that, never scam bait. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Um, personally, I, I've been attacked by scammers online who I've baited, so it's not a safe thing to do. Uh, her questions were, and we'll start with the first one. Um, how do you get scammers to talk with you on the phone? Basically, I don't talk to them on the phone. I talk to them on video voice chat on Facebook or Hangouts or wherever I'm talking to them. Um, a lot of times um, I will just chat with them for a couple minutes. If I know they're fake, I'll hit the call button and just voice chat with them as the old lady. Um, a lot of them are not reluctant to do it. Uh, one of your questions was, are they reluctant? They're not. Uh, most of them will chat with you. There are some that won't. There are some that'll stay silent and just listen to you say hello. Um, but there are some that they'll just chat away. They'll, they'll laugh and play and talk and, and act like you're their best friend. Um, those scammers are after something. They want your money. Um, the ones that don't chat, some are very hardcore. Some, some know that they have the West African, the Nigerian accent, and they don't want to speak because they know that you might catch on to that. Um, but a lot of times I'd say probably out of 10 scammers I've called, eight of them have always picked up the phone. So, and, and again, I don't call them from my home phone, my mobile phone. I don't, I, I call them on voice chat online. Just, it's a good way to stay safe. Um, and then her second question was, do they have your phone number? Absolutely not. I would not give my phone number to anybody online that I don't know in person or that I don't know very, very, very well. Um, never give your phone number out. A lot of scammers are quick to get you off Facebook, off a dating site and say, give me your phone number, dear. Download WhatsApp, download, you know, Hangouts. 
don't do it. Don't give your phone number out to strangers. It's no different than if you were out in in person somewhere and you just walk up to someone and they say, give me your phone number. You wouldn't do it, so don't do it online. Say, no, I'd be more comfortable chatting first until we get to know each other better, and then you can make that call. But uh, no, I, I never give scammers my phone number. And uh, what information do they give that leads you to their real identification? Let me start by saying we don't always find scammers. It's not something that happens every day. I mean, we do have you know real faces that are revealed. The majority of the time when we find them, it's because they've asked for money in their real name, their real full name, their real city, their real country, and that's how we find them. You know, um, There's payment details that they give us that leads us to their real face, and most scammers are online. Most scammers are do have real Facebook pages, and a lot of them have money and hustle hard and all this great stuff on it, and we find them. Uh, we don't post fake profiles um, and real faces unless we know they are real. Um, unless we can we can be 100% sure that that is the scammer behind it. We don't post people just to say, look at us, we posted the real face. We have 100% proof before we post anything. And yes, to touch on something that happened um, a couple weeks ago, we did uh, find a real face and he was a known Nigerian rapper. And we had payment details that led to his face, so we posted it. And we don't do it unless we're 100% sure. And we have no questions. Okay, and then um, when talking to somebody, if they ask you, you know, you're online on a dating site and they ask you for your email address right away and they want to take you off site, that's a huge red flag. We've had so many people tell us, well, I was talking to this guy on Facebook, but he wanted my email address right away, or he wanted to take me to Hangouts or Kick or Viber right away. It, Facebook's shutting down a lot of these fake profiles, and a lot of them are moving off site very quickly because they are getting shut down. Um, so that's one big, huge red flag. And you need to look at it like if you were sitting face to face with somebody in a bar or in a club or in a grocery store, or a coffee shop, and they said to you, I'd really like you, dear. Let's go talk outside out back in the alley. You wouldn't do it. So don't do it online. It's the same thing. They're trying to lure you away from the site. They're trying to lure you away from all of that stuff. So just, just if a legit person wants to know you, they're not gonna lure you onto a different dating site. They're not gonna lure you onto a different chat platform or um, they're not gonna want your phone number, your email address, your address, all your information right away. That's a huge, huge, huge red flag. So keep that in mind. Hi, Linda, say hi to everybody, Tanya. If I missed anybody or if I missed any of your questions, um, just hit, you know, come to our inbox and we will definitely answer them or we'll answer them on our next Q&A. Now, one more thing I want to talk about um, before we end this live feed, so I don't want to make this go too long. URLs. We've covered this before, and I want to cover it again. A URL. Now, facebook.com slash and your URL. That's the entire URL. Um, a lot of people have brought us profiles, and they have said, well, this person's fake. And we ask, well, how do you know they're fake? And they say, well, their URL is something different. So they're automatically fake. That is absolutely, absolutely not true. Um, it's also known as a link or a profile link if you don't know what a URL is. Um, if you're talking to somebody named Bob Smith and their URL or their profile link is facebook.com slash Mr. Fisherman, that does not mean the profile is fake. That means that that person maybe likes to go fishing or maybe they like to you know, do something with sports. Um, personally, my personal URL, I used to be a drummer, so mine has to do with music. It doesn't mean I'm fake. It just means that I've chosen a profile link URL that is, you know, coincides with my hobbies. So the only way, honestly, if a URL, if the profile is fake, if you're talking to someone named Tom Smith, and he's a military guy, but his URL is facebook.com slash OUL Nigeria money boy then you know it's fake that that's there's without a doubt it's fake and what is happening is more and more scammers are using their real profiles and they're just changing their profile name and their profile photo but their URL is going to be the same once you you cho you've chosen a profile URL for Facebook you can't change it it stays the same so a lot of these scammers are using their real profiles which are years and years old and Facebook's not going to delete them and lock them out and they're just changing their profile picture and their name so always look at a URL, but don't assume that because it's different that it's fake. But you know, obviously the ones that are 
very clearly fake. Tom Smith, and his name is Ghana GH Moneybags. Yeah, it's going to be a fake. So, so just remember that. Don't, don't, uh, we get a lot of people that bring us profiles and say it's fake, it's fake. And we ask why. And they say, well, because his URL is uh, Mr. Sandman and his name is Tom Jones. But we look at the profile and it turns out he, you know, sells mattresses. So that doesn't mean that, that the person's fake. It just means that their URL is different than their name. But like I said, the obvious ones, yeah, they're going to be fake. Um, we'll answer a few questions in our little um, chat window and then we're going to go ahead and close this. Um, okay. Herb Gingrich wrote, what happens when those get reported? Uh, when you bring a profile to us and we confirm that they're fake, we just post them. We don't report them to Facebook. We don't shut them off. We don't have the authority to do anything other than expose the profile and let all of you know that this profile is fake. Um, you, it's up to you if you want to report to Facebook. We've touched on this before. Um, if you want to report them to Facebook, that's your deal. Uh, personally, I don't do it because they just come back and make 10 more profiles. Or a lot of times Facebook will say, no, that's fine. Because what's happening, as I said before, they're using their real profiles, and the profiles are four, five, ten years old, and Facebook's looking at the age of the profile because a lot of times they look at how old the profile is. If it's brand new, more than likely they'll, they'll boot it out. But if it's an older profile, they don't do anything with it. They'll say, oh, thank you. It doesn't go against standards, and that's it. So, you know, we, we just expose we're just here to expose them. We're just here to let people be aware of them. And that's that's pretty much what we do. Uh, so if you do bring them to us, know that if they are fake, we will post them. So we've got a couple couple more. Do you get, yes, if, yes, we do. Uh, so he also asked if we, we get all the ones that you guys turn in. We do, we look at every single inbox every day. We look at every profile you send every day. We try to mix our page up and not have continuous fake profiles. So, you know, if you send us 20 profiles, let me say this, if you know they're fake, if you are 100% sure these are fake without a doubt, post them directly to the page because that gives you a chance to get them out there. And it gives us a chance to help victims because we can't, there's only two of us and we can't spend, you know, two hours posting all of your profiles. So if you know they're fake, you're, you're sure without a doubt, bring them to us. If you don't, um, then you can bring them to us and say, you know, I'm not really sure. And we can confirm and then we can, you can post them if we confirm for you or whatever you want to do. But it would be a lot better if you post directly to the page, if you know they're fake, because they'll get out there quicker. Uh, someone wrote Tony Joe Zuckerberg does not care. Mark Zuckerberg probably doesn't care. Um, he has shut our pages. There. Facebook has shut our page down many times. I really don't care. Um, he he's about money. He's about advertisement. Um, you know, Facebook's a great social network site, but there are so many flaws in it, and the way that they do their security is not across the board. It is so random. They will shut down profiles that are legit, but keep uh, blatantly obvious fake ones open. They keep fake you know, profiles open, they shut mine, they, they've done all kinds of stuff. Um, they keep groups open that trade credit cards, stolen credit cards. They do all kinds of things. So uh, Facebook is not the be all end all to social media. Um, you know, if any of you have been in the days of Talk City and MySpace, you know that things come and go. A lot of scammers are moving off of Facebook and moving, like I said, to Hangouts and other chat apps. So uh, that's to answer your question, honestly, how I feel now, he doesn't care. Um, if we have any more questions, yes, there are a lot of military guys soliciting for money. Please, please, please do not send money to a military profile. Military men don't need your money. They don't need it. They have their own money, their own credit unions, their own way to get money. They don't need iTunes gift cards while they're deployed to Syria. In fact, when they're deployed to Syria, they're more than likely not online chatting. Um, and we've covered that in our latest video about uh, profiles and teddy bears and hearts and all girly, pretty things. You know. A hardcore military guy who's in the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, I don't care, any form, any branch of the military, these guys are hardcore guys. They are guns, weapons, hardcore dirty jokes. You know, they sleep and not shower for days. They are out there in, in the military. They're doing their thing, serving their country. They're not going to have a profile that has cuddly kitties, hearts and teddy bears as wallpaper. They're not going to have photos of, you know, Old, old women and men cuddling together and roses and all that stuff because military guys are hardcore. They are going to make fun of each other. They make fun of each other now. 
let alone have a military dude with a profile that's got a cuddly teddy bear on it that says, I, I long to, to have a wife. No, a real military man is not going to have that on his profile. So if you're talking to somebody and they've got that on their profile, absolutely not. They're fake. Um, we just want to touch, we're going to start making more YouTube videos. Uh, we've had a lot of people ask us if we will specifically cover certain subjects on each of our tutorials. And that's something that Ann and I are looking into doing. Um, a lot of you have asked if we will do like um, an educational video that is just about military. So you guys can come on and watch the video, ask questions about just military stuff. And that's something that um, we're going to start covering. Uh, something we've had people ask and it's something we're going to do here in the future. We're going to have like little classes that cover specific questions about specific things. You know, one, one day we may have one about military profiles and next it might be about just gift cards. So if that's something that you guys have asked for. So we're going to definitely work on that in 2018. Our YouTube channel is growing more and more every day. We've got a certified YouTube channel now. So if you guys um, have any questions and want a tutorial video done or you have anything that you want us to cover in the future, drop us an inbox. We're happy to do it. We're, we try to make as many videos as possible. So just give us, uh, give us some time. And like I said, if you have anything you want done, any subject you want touched on, please let us know and we will do it. All right. Well, we're going to close our live video feed for today. We're hoping to do, you know, maybe one of these a month or more if you guys want them. If you have any questions or if I missed any questions, come to our inbox. I'm happy to answer them. Anne's happy to answer them for you. And we will do more and more as time goes on. We'd like to thank everybody who came to this live feed. And also, um, thank you guys for sticking with us for all these years. You know, we've been going since 2013. And, you know, if we get shut down again, like I said, we're always going to be around. Can't get rid of us. And, uh, you know, 2018, look forward to our website, look forward to other things happening. Until then, you guys stay safe. Um, love yourself. Don't love the scammers. Don't send money. Spend your money on yourself. And uh, any questions, our inbox is open. Until then, you guys take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye.